Good morning, YouTubers, YouTube audience. Hope you guys are having a great Sunday. And we are coming to you with a special live stream today. I just tried to live stream using an encoder that I just bought and couldn't figure it out. And I really wanted to get this out this morning. So I had to scrap that effort. I'm going to try and revisit exactly how to use the encoder later. But for now, we're going to stick with Google Hangouts. The downside is I really wanted to do a screen and screen display but we won't be able to do that. Instead, you're just gonna watch the screen share as I do most of my SAT videos. And what we're gonna to do today is gonna to be really cool. We are going to, I'm gonna go through as many SAT Khan Academy practice, uh, full length practice tests as I can, just the math portions in the time allotted. So I have a 10 a.m. tutoring appointment in Beverly Hills. So I will have to stop at a certain point so I can make that appointment. But I'm gonna see what I can do now. I'm going to go as fast as I can so I can blast through these problems and I'm going to try and explain it along the way. My estimate is hopefully I should be able to get through at least two sections because I got a little under two hours. But if I go really fast, maybe I can get through three full length practice tests and eventually I want to go through all of them. I just need a bigger time frame, a bigger window. But I wanted to see what people thought if people would enjoy something like this. So let's see what you think. Let's see if this is helpful, if this is useful, if this is just way too fast and not helpful. Uh, please let me know. Part of the reason why I'm going to be going quickly is because you can't take, as far as I know, you can't take these Khan Academy full length tests on time. Like the, it, it automatically times you to get you in that zone. So we're going to have to do it that way. And it is what it is, but it should be still a lot of fun. And I love solving these problems. And we'll go over ones if I get, if I do end up making some mistakes. So I'm going to switch over to screen share right about now and screen share has begun. So now let's go here. We're gonna have to do it a special way, kind of like this. We're gonna say, so here's the section. Now, we're not gonna, I, I'm on test uh, one and I'm not gonna take the verbal section. So I can, I think it won't let me skip these. The way you have to do it, let me show you. You have to go like this. We have to start with the timer. And then we just say continue the first section and then we say finish this section. So we're gonna get uh, zeros on these parts. Okay, start the next section. Let's go start the timer and finish this section. Yes, I'm done with the section. So now I've gotten two zeros in a row, that's okay. So we're, whenever we're ready, we're gonna start that math section. Now I'm gonna do a, a screen share here like this, or a split, a split screen, excuse me. And we're going to have this guy come up here. This should work just nicely. Very nice. It works. So I'm going to clear the board here. Hopefully this will be nice to view. Without further ado, let's get going. Let's begin and start. I'm going to go as fast as I can. This is the no calculator section is what we're starting. 20 questions, 25 minutes in total. Let's begin. So we don't need these directions. Go, 1 through 20. So x minus 1, whoops, over 3 equals k. k equals 3. What is the value of x? We just got to solve this like this. x minus 1 equals 9, right? I'm adding 1. I'm just doing variable isolation. x equals 10. All right, so we're going to go with that and to the next problem. What is, whoops, what for i equals negative? So this is a nice uh, uh complex number one. So I'm just going to remove the parentheses because they're not doing any good. So I'm going to go like this. And now we just add the like terms, right? These guys are like terms, so that becomes 12i. These guys are both constants, so that becomes negative one. And so it should be this, negative one plus 12i, which is a. Let's go to this guy here. So now we have to do, let's read it. On Saturday afternoon, our mom sent M text messages each hour for five hours and Tyrone sent, so Armand sent 5M and Tyrone sent P for P, right? Because he said for five hours, M per hour. So that's, this is A, this is T. So which of the following represents the total number of messages sent by both of them? It's just these guys added together. It's 5M plus 4P. You know, we add these two guys, so 5M. This one's close, so you gotta be careful. It's, it's almost right. Kathy is a, let's see what it says. Kathy is a repair technician for a phone company. Each week she receives.
a batch of phones that need repairs. The number of phones. Oh yeah, and sorry, by the way, if you're watching on Instagram, wa go to my YouTube channel, you can watch the live stream. Go to YouTube, search for Scalar Learning, and then you can see the screen. Uh, this is just so you can kind of hear me and watch me, but if you want to see the screen, go there. Technician, each week, each week she receives a batch of phones that need repairs. The number of phones that she has left to fix at the end of the day can be estimated with this guy. 108 minus 23D. P is the number of phones left, and D is the number of days that she has worked. What is the meaning of 108? So we've got D. This is like what she's repairing. Every, every day, she's knocking off 23 phones. So that's what the 23 phones represents. This is our this is the constant. So this is always the starting point. And in this particular case, this means that she's starting each week with 108 phones. That's that's always what that constant is going to represent or our, our y intercept and that's it these other ones don't make sense at all let's go on to sorry i'm a little gotta go a little fast gotta make sure we finish these problems then we got x squared y minus 3y squared plus 5xy squared all this crazy so we gotta we gotta uh combine these guys so x squared y minus 3y squared plus 5x I'm going to just remove those parentheses it's irrelevant. But this one is not irrelevant because we've got a minus in front. So that means a, a negative one is going to distribute to all of these. So it's going to be, see the minus minus there cancels into a plus x squared y minus 3xy squared. You see how I'm distributing it to everything plus 3y squared. Now let's go ahead and combine like terms. These two combine to be 2xy squared these two combine to be x squared y. And then we've got the, the look, a negative 3y squared, positive 3y squared, they just cancel out. And, and I think I've gotten everything else, right? These guys cancel, uh, combine to be 2x, well, I forgot the 2, 2x squared y, and then these guys cancel to be this. So it should be 2x squared y plus 2xy squared, and that is c. Let's go to the next question. All right. Now, normally I'm trying to always do this stuff for the first time. So it feels like I'm going through it with you. I actually have done this one before. It's, it's super fun. I think I've actually done this on camera before. I, I know these questions. A pediatric, pediatrician uses the model above to estimate the height of a boy in inches in terms of the boy's age, A, in years between ages two and five. Based on the model, what is the estimated increase in inches of a boy's height each year? All we gotta look at is since A represents age, okay, how is it changing? It's always set at 28.6. Every time it goes up by one, it think about it as like a slope. It's multiplied by three. Three is how much it goes up each incremental year. So we already know it's gonna increase three inches per year. We can move right along. All right, now we got a tough problem. Formula above gives a monthly payment M needed to pay off a loan of P dollars at R percent annual interest over N months. Which of the following gives P in terms of M, R, N? What are they? They just want us to isolate P. That's all that's happening. So if we want to isolate P, we got to go very carefully. So first, we're going to, I'm going to look at this in two parts. First, I'm going to get rid of this entire denominator. So first, I'm going to multiply both sides whoops, by that denominator, which is going to give me this. And I'm going to actually do a double bra uh, bracket. So it becomes one plus R. So I'm knocking off that denominator right off the bat uh, to the N power minus one. That's usually how I, I start to solve these guys. We can do this actually in one step. I'm gonna do it step by step. Equals, now we've just got R over 1200 times one plus R over 1200 to the N power times P. So this all equals that. Now, all we got to do is we got to complete isolating P. We got to divide both sides by what we have over here, this whole numerator, right? One plus R over 1200 to the N uh, R over 1200 times one plus R over 1200 to the N goes away. And here's our answer. It's just this. So we got to see which one of these is M. Okay, so they kind of formatted it differently. But the key is this thing has to be on top, which we have right here. 
this has to be on the bottom, this has to be on the bottom, and M is right there. So it's going to be B. These other ones don't. This is the closest one. They just didn't flip it. They didn't flip it as they were supposed to. Let's go on to this guy. Let me clear the board here. If A over B equals, let's see, A over B equals 2, what is the value of 4B over A? Okay, here's how I'm going to do this. I am going to multiply, let's see, AB over 2. How would I do this? Okay, yeah, we, so I'm going to multiply this times B. So A equals 2B. Oops, oh my gosh, what am I doing? A equals 2B. Then I'm going to divide both sides by A. Divide both sides by A. 2B over A equals 1. So I'm kind of moving things around to make this as similar as possible. But now I, it's, I'm actually in a really good spot because I can multiply this whole thing by 2. I didn't, I'm literally just kind of going with the flow, trying to mirror what they have in 4B over A. That's why I got B over A by moving things around. Now I've got 2 equals 4B, oops, 4B over A, right? Just multiply the numerator. That's what we wanted. It's 2. So it's as simple as that. You could have also, I guess, plugged in numbers. You could have said A equals 2, B equals 1. And A equals 2, yeah, and, and that would have still, if you wanted to plug in numbers, that would have worked. Maybe even been a bit faster. I'm usually not a big fan of that strategy. But in that case, all right, what is the solution of this? How do we solve a system of equations? So I'm going to line these guys up like this, and I'm going to match the variables. So I'm going to say negative x plus 2y equals negative 19. You can use substitution or elimination. I like elimination. I'm going to multiply the bottom one by 3 because it's going to work out nicely. Then we have negative 3x plus 6y equals negative 57. Again, no calculator on this section. Why did I do that? Because I just knew I, you want to match up these to have a negative and a positive for one of the variables to eliminate them. So now these guys, this X's cross off. This becomes 10Y. This becomes equals negative 80. Divide both sides by 10. And Y equals negative 8. And we want the value, we want the solution for both. Then I take the negative 8, plug it back up into either one. So I'll plug it into this one. So it's 3x plus 4 times negative 8 equals negative 23. 3x minus 32 equals negative 23 plus 32. Oops, plus 32. 3x equals 9. Divide by 3, divide by 3. x equals 3. So the coordinate pair is 3, negative 8. And right there, oops. Next question. Okay, we've got... And by the way, I think uh, we had, what is it, 25 minutes? So, I mean, we're getting close to the halfway mark, so I got to hustle. AX squared plus 24. Uh, A is a constant, and G of uh, 4 equals 8. So G of 4, this is how I'm going to do it, equals A 4 squared plus 24. I'm going to solve for A first. So G of 4 equals 8, so we can replace this. 8 equals 16A plus 24 minus 24 minus 24 so we have negative 16 equals 16 a a equals negative one now we want g of negative four so now we rewrite the function g of x equals negative one times x squared plus 24 now we plug in negative four negative one negative four squared plus 24 this is again 16 but negative 16 because we got the negative 1 after we apply the square plus 24, and we get, get 8. So it's positive 8. I think we did that right, right? Negative 4, 6, so 4, 16, and it's got to be negative 1, negative, yeah, yeah, that's right. Okay, next. Oops, let's clear the board here. Boom. In the equations above, B and C represent the price per pound in dollars of beef and chicken, respectively, X weeks after July 1st during last summer. What was the price per pound of beef when the price per what was the price per pound of beef when the price per pound of beef was equal to the price per pound of chicken? That means these guys are I'm setting them equal to each other. 2.35 plus 0.25x equals 1.75 plus 0.4x. And we've got, I'm going to subtract 0.25x, 0.25x, oops, 0.25x, that goes away. And then I'm going to subtract 
1.75. All right, get rid of that. So here we got 0.15x equals, what is that, 0.6. And then we divide both sides by 0 0.15, 0 0.15. It's just like 60 divided by 15 and x equals 4. But they don't want that. That's just the, that's just the number of weeks after July. Now we want the price. What was the price per pound of beef? Now we plug four back into B. B equals 2.35 plus 0.25 times four. 0.25 times four is one. So 2.35 plus one equals 3.35. $3.35, I assume is correct. Next question. Now we are on question number 12. Align the XY plane pass through the origin so the y-intercept is zero, slope of one-seventh. Which of the following points lies on the line? Here's my equation, FYI. It's one-seventh x. There's no y-intercept. So that's literally it. Uh, which one of these lies on the line? I mean, you can plug them in if you want. It's definitely not this because it's supposed to be on the origin. You can kind of plug these in if you want. So if I plug zero in here, I do not get seven. So a is out. If I plug in one over here, I do not get seven, I get one seven. If I plug in seven over here, I do not get seven. If I plug in 14 over here, I do get two because one seventh of 14 is two. That one is good to go. Let's do this next guy here. 12 minutes left, oh my God. If X is greater than three, which of the following is equivalent to this? This is much trickier than it looks. First, we must combine these two guys. So I have to make them into like uh, common denominators, one over x plus three. That means I have to multiply this one by x plus two over x plus two, this one by x plus three over x plus three. And we gotta add these guys. So now we get one over, you have to do this before you can flip it around x plus 3 plus x plus 2 over, and we can foil this. It looks like they fold it here. It's x squared plus 5x plus 6. I just did foil, right? First, outer, inner, last. Sorry, I got to go a little fast here. And then we got 1 over. I'm combining these guys here. 2x plus 5 over x squared plus 5x plus 6. And then now, since there's one over that, we just now we can flip everything and it becomes x squared plus 5x plus 6 over 2x plus 5. And that's your final answer. And that is this guy. Let's go on to the next one. Clear this guy. Let's see. 3x minus 1, 12 was the value of 8x, 8 to the x over 2 to the y. Okay. Let's see here. Let's see if we can solve for this. 2 to the x, 8 to the y. Hmm. So if we say 3x equals, I got to think about this for a second, equals y plus 12, right? Is there any equivalency that I can draw here? So it's like 8x, let's see, y is... Oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to I'm going to do it like this. Y equals 3x minus 12. I, I I think I've done this before. I can't remember. So it would be 8 to the x over. Yeah, I remember now. 2 to the 3x minus 12. The idea is we want to get these guys to have the same base. So the way we do that is we then now change this. The 2 and 8 could this we can change 8 to a 2 because 2 uh, 8 is really 2 to the third power. So this is 2 to the third power to the x over 2 to the 3x minus 12. Now we've got a much better situation because now we can just multiply these exponents. we got 2 to the 3x over 2 to the 3x minus 12. And then we subtract down. We subtract the exponents down. So it's 2 to the 3x minus 3x minus 12. This distributes here and here. Now this becomes... The, these x's cancel out and it becomes a positive 2 to the 12th. And that's your answer. That one was a little tricky. And I ho hopefully that made sense. I know it's fast. If, if I have time, I'll go back and show you. But I, it looks like I got nine minutes left. I don't think I will. So you said 8x plus 2 times bx plus 7 equals all this. 
for all values of x, a plus b equals 8, what are the two possible values for c? Okay, I'm going to foil this because I think we have to go fast now. a, b, x squared plus 7, a, x plus 2, b, x plus 14 equals all of this. We know that a times b must equal 15. I can, you can see that right here because the, the equation that they have on the other side is 15x squared plus cx plus 14. And so we know two things. We know that a times b must be 15. We also know that c is going to be what these guys, when, these, when you add these guys together, we also know that 7a plus 2b must equal c, right? Because these guys are this middle term right here. So now we got a little information to work from and we can actually do, let's see if we can do a little substitution here. So if AB equals 15, what we can do, and then we got C equals this guy. Oh, and they, we want two possible values for C. So let's see if I can refine this a little bit. Um, B equals 15. Do I have a third data point? And then two times seven is 14. A times B equals 15. Let me think at what else. 7A. Uh, no. Okay. Oh, and we also know that A plus B equals 8. Yeah, that's the one. There we go. Now we can solve this much more easily. So if A plus B equals 8, 8 times, look, obviously A has to equal 5 or 3. B has to equal then 3 or 5, right? Because that's the only way we can get times to 15 and adding to 8. Therefore, we have two different options. It could be seven times three plus two times five, or seven times five plus two times three. Those are two options. This is 21, this is 31, this is 35 plus six equals 41. So it's in between 31 and 41. Yikes, that one is crazy. Okay, now we get into the free response. So usually you'll notice that now the first free response question, that was like the hardest of the multiple choice. Now it's gone back a little easier. They said t squared minus 4 and t is greater than 0. What's the value of t? You could probably just figure out what squared has to equal 4 because we're subtracting 4, getting 0. It could be negative 2 or 2, but it has to be greater than 0, so it's got to be 2. That one was good. Now let's do this guy here. Let's see. We've got a summer counselor wants to find the length x in feet across a leg represented in the sketch here. So we've got to find x like this. And the lengths represented by a, b, e, b, b, d, and c, d on the sketch were determined to be, oh, wow. So they give us all, let me try and redraw this here because i got to fill it in. Got to go expeditiously. B, d, c, e, a. And it's saying that e, b, Let's see, AB is, this is crazy because there's so many numbers. AB is 1800, right? And then it says EB, where's EB? EB is 1400, okay? And then we've got BD is, BD, where's BD? BD is 700. And then we've got CD is 800. CD over here is 800, like this. Right, and AC and DE intersect at B, AEB, AEB, and CDB, CDB have the same measures. We also know that these guys are the same measures because they're vertical angles. This is a hard one because they're not telling us this, but these, and then when you have two angles, the third one must be equal. That just means these triangles are similar. So we have ratios, these triangles are similar, and it means AB is similar to BC, BD is the same as EB, or similar to EB, and most importantly, DC is similar to AE, and we need to find AE. So we can just set up some nice little ratios now. I'm gonna call AE X, right, Because as they do. So I'm gonna say X over its same guy on this little triangle, 800, so big triangle over little triangle equals what else do we know? Oh, we know that we've got 1,400 in the big triangle is equivalent to 700 in the little triangle. Now you can do some cross multiplication. Now this is no math, no calculator. I'm just gonna simplify this because this is X over 800 equals two. I mean, now you just multiply the 800 across, 
you get x equals 1600. And I mean, I think that looks pretty accurate. Like that looks about right if we assume this is drawn somewhat to scale. So I'm going to say 1600. I'm going to go with it. Oops. Wait, did I enter it? Yeah, I think I did. Okay. And then we okay, we got three questions left, and I got four minutes. So I'm going to talk less and just try and blast through these to make sure we can get these done. So system of equations value above. So x, y equals negative 9. I'm going to use uh, uh, plus 2y equals negative 25. Elimination, I'm going to make this negative, make this negative, make this positive. We got negative y equals 16, right? Nine, negative 9, 25 is 16. So y equals negative 16. And then negative 16, so then x has to be 7, right? 7 plus negative 16 is negative 9. Seven negative nine is oh wait 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 seven hold on did I do something wrong because it doesn't work in the second one seven and oh yeah negative sixteen I'm sorry seven negative sixteen negative thirty two negative yeah that's right okay. boom two questions left three minutes left right triangle boom 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 uh, one angle x where sine of x, so opposite 4, and this has to be 5, and this is a 3. What is cosine of 90 minus x, which is this angle? So cosine would be cosine would be adjacent over 5 because it's this angle, so it's just 4 fifths. 4 divided by 5. I'll get it. So look, let me come back to this, but basically all I did was sine is, I drew the triangle, sine is 4, over hypotenuse. I figured out the hypotenuse from four fifths, right? And then it says cosine of 90 minus x. That's just this angle over here because it's the other angle. That's all it is. And cosine is adjacent, which is four over hypotenuse, which is five. Okay. Last question. Two minutes left. Two minutes left. If a equals five square root two and two a equals square root two x what is the value of x? So let's multiply this through. And we've got 10 root 2 equals root 2x. So in order for us to bring a 10 outside, this has to be 10 squared, right? Because, look, this is y. I'm going to say that's, I mean, and how else could we do this? I think, I mean, you, you, you can kind of, yeah, so we could break this up into square root 2 times square root of x, right? So, so since the 10 relates to the square root of x, Square root of what is 10? It's 100, all right? All right, I think we finished just under the wire. I'm going to go ahead and finish this. We don't have time to really check our answers with all the talking I've been doing. I think I got everything right, so let us conclude. Yes, I'm done with this section. Boom. All right. Whew. All right, we can take a breather for a second. And we're going to go to the next calculator. Now, this is a calculator section. I don't have a calculator with me. I'm just going to use the Google calculator. It's more fun that way you can see what I'm doing. A Google calculator is not necessarily approved for the test. So I'm going to try and use it in a way that is approved. I mean, it's not a very complex calculator. So it should still mirror the actual testing experience. Let's see where we're at time-wise. Not too bad. So let's get started without further ado. Here we go, here we go, and this one is 38 questions at 55 minutes. Ready, set, begin. Continue the first section, go. All righty. This person runs at different speeds as a training program. The graph shows his target heart rate at different times. During his workout, on which top interval is the target rate strictly increasing then strictly decreasing? So flatline is neither. Flatline staying the same. So we're talking about increasing than decreasing. But this looks good, like 40 to 60. And that's right there. They have that option, 0 to 30. None of these other ones work. None of these other ones work. Strictly increasing than decreasing. Next. Y equals KX. K is a constant. Y equals 24. So I'm going to start plugging this in right here. Y equals 24 when x equals 6. So we can solve for k, all right? We can divide both sides by 6, and we get k equals 4. Boom. So if k equals 4, it says, what is what is the value of y when x equals 5? Let's go back to this equation. We can now say k is just 4. 
And we want to know what is y when x equals 5. 4 times 5, y equals 20. Excellent. Next question. <clears throat> In the figure to the left, lines L and M are parallel to lines S and T. Uh, and sorry, and lines S and T, are, I'm sorry, lines N, L and M are parallel, S and T are parallel. If the measure of 1 is 35, what is the measure of 2? So we can do some cool stuff here. Basically, 1 and 2 are supplementary. That's what's really happening. And I, I can kind of show you why that is. It's like if we 1 and this angle down here, they're, they're corresponding angles. So this is the same as 1. So 1 is right here. And then one is also a corresponding angle with this guy. So, so basically one and two are right next to each other, the supplementary. If one is 35, 180 minus 35 is, whoops, 145, excuse me, not 155. So it's 145. And it looks like it's 145. They were nice to do that. Now let's go on to the next one. 16 plus 4x is 10 more than 14. Boom, let's just solve it. 24 equals 16 plus 4x, subtract 16, subtract 16, 4x equals 8, divide by 4, divide by 4, x equals 2. If x equals 2, 8 times 2, 8x, 16. Next. Which of the following graphs best shows a strong negative association between D and T? Negative association should have a negative slope going down like this. A is no good. There's no relationship shown there. B is kind of not negative. It's just sort of a constant. This is a really nice positive association. D is our negative, a nice negative slope. Six, one decagram equals 10,000 milligrams equals one gram. Hospital stores one type of medicine in two decagram containers. Okay. In... So these things are, I assume they're like this. So it's two, two decagrams. Based on the information given in the box above, how many one milligram doses are there in one de two decagram thing? So a milligram, we've got a thousand milligrams in a gram. A decagram is 10 grams. So a thousand milligrams in a gram means since there's 10 grams in one decagram, we got 10,000 milligrams in the decagram. But since we got two decagrams, it's going to be 20,000. And none of these are even close. D is the only viable answer. So let's move on. I think we're doing pretty good time-wise so far. But you can see these first questions, they don't take that many steps. Then it starts to get very difficult. The number of rooftops with solar panel installations in five cities is shown in the graph to the left. If the total number of installations is 27,500, what is an appropriate label for the vertical graph? So I'm going to add all these up. So we got 9 plus 5 plus 6 plus 4 plus 3.5. So this is 14. This is 20. And then it's plus 7.5. 27.5. And 27,500. So this would be, it should be in thousands, right? Because... 27.5. That means 9 represents actually 9,000. 5 represents 5,000, so it's in thousands. For what value of n is n minus 1 plus 1 equal to 0? n minus 1, absolute value, plus 1 equals to 0. I, I can tell you right off the bat. Okay, here, watch. Let's isolate this. So what's going to happen is we're going to get absolute value of something equals a negative number. This is essentially impossible for real numbers because there's nothing that you can plug in here. Absolute value is the positive purifier. Everything that comes out is going to be positive. Therefore, it cannot equal negative one. No such value. Simple as that. All right, now we got two questions. So let's see what it says. A equals 1,052 plus... 1.08 t and the formula above shows the relationship between a the speed of a sound wave in feet per second and t the air temperature not time in degrees which of the following expression expresses air temperature 
in terms of speed. All they're doing is they're isolating T. If we want to isolate T, we first subtract by 1,052, right? And then we divide by 1.08, 1.08, and that's it. A minus 1,052 divided by 1.08. Then it says at which of the following air temperatures will the speed of sound be closest to 1,000 feet per second? So that means we're plugging in, this is a plug in chart, we're plugging in 1,000 for A, 1,052 plus 1.08 T. We gotta find T, we gotta find air temperature. Let's subtract 1,052, 1,052 from both sides, right? We're solving for, for T. Negative 52 equals 1.08 T. Since this is calculator, I'm gonna go ahead and use the calculator to speed up time. Uh, T is negative 52 divided by 1.08. 52 divided by 1.08. Just remember this is negative. And it's about four, negative 48 degrees. Man, they really, look how close these are all together. Negative 48, negative 49. So the calculator is good so we can get a really nice precise answer here. Right? So they're less kind to us in the calculator section as far as precision. Which of the following numbers is not a solution to this? Well, let's solve it, or let's get it a little bit nicer. 4x minus 3. We add 5 to both sides. We subtract 4x from both sides. Goodbye. Goodbye. Th 3x minus 4x is negative x is greater than or equal to 2. Multiply everything by negative 1, and we get x is less than or equal to. Got to switch that when we multiply or divide by a negative number. x is less than or equal to negative 2. This is not uh, less than negative 2. This is equal to negative 2. This is less than negative 2, less than negative 2. This one is our only one that doesn't work. Can't be negative 1. You can even plug it in. Negative 3 minus 5 is negative 8. Negative 4 minus 3 is negative 7. Negative 8 is not greater than or equal to negative 7. Boom. Number of seeds in each of 12 apples. Based on the histogram to the left of, follow, of the following, which is the closest to the average arithmetic mean uh, number of seeds per apples? So we can just add them all up, right? So we've got 3, 3, like 2 with 3 in it, right? We've got five, 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 four fives, one six, two sevens, and then three nines. You can use a calculator. I think I'm going to try this without. So this is 26 up here, and this is 27 plus 14 is 31. 41 plus 6 is 47. And you add them up, 6 plus 7 is 3. 73, uh, which is closest. And then we got 73 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 73 divided by 12. It's about 6 because it's it's close to 6. All right. I think I, think I did that right. If I if I made a mistake, I, you know, I'm going a little fast. I could have made an arithmetic mistake, but we'll, we'll find out in the end. But that's the general process. A group of 10th graders responded to a survey that asked which math course they were currently enrolled in. As the survey data was broken down as shown in the table to the left. Which of the following categories accounts for approximately 19% of all the survey respondents? We got total 310. So what is 19% of 310? Let's see. 0.19 times 310 equals 58.959. So which one of these is going to be 59? Let's look. Females taking geometry. No, it's close. Females taking algebra too. No, but it's close. Males taking algebra, males taking geometry. That looks good. So I'm going to circle it. Let's just look at males taking algebra one. It's 44. It's not good. So that's good. I hope that made sense. I went a little fast, but I hope that made sense. The table on the left inside, the table to the left lists the lengths to the nearest inch of a random sample of 21 brown bullhead fish. The outlier measure of 24 inches is an error. This is an error. The mean, median, and range of values 
which will change the most if the 24 inch measurement is removed from the data, which will change the most. Mm, interesting. Mean is usually pretty good at handling the outliers. So I would say the, I mean, sorry, median. It's not gonna be the median. Definitely not change by the same amount. Range and mean will be impacted. But I would say the range because the range with the eight, uh, sorry, which will change the most. So 24 minus eight is currently, sorry, uh, 16, right? And if we take it out, the range drops to eight. The median, all right? I can tell, I mean, it's like, I can tell you, I can tell you in a, in a short answer without spending too much time. Let's see, seven, so 21. So you're, you're basically, this has an impact on the mean, but it's drawn out over 21, you know, across 21 other values. So it's not going to have as significant of an impact. It maybe bumps the mean up by one or a little bit more than one. So I'm going to say the range, pretty, pretty positive about that. And we're going to move on. Let's go to this. What does C interpret C the C intercept represent in here? Cost. So this is it sounds like the total cost of renting a boat. It's how much you would spend if you just rent the boat for zero hours. Or the initial cost of renting the boat. Yeah, that would be this. Not this total number of boat. No, this none of these make sense. This is the starting point. So the initial cost. It's always the Y, or in this case, C intercept. Which of the following represents the relationship between H and C? H and C, let's see how this works. It's got to have a y-intercept. Cannot have, these guys are, oh, sorry, A is not right and D is not right. I wish we could cross those off. Th these are the right y-intercept. Now we just have to figure out what's the right slope. Is it three? I don't know. Let's see. Do we go up one, two, three, and then over one? Yes. One, two, three, and then over one? Yes. And assuming H is in hours, yeah, so it's definitely C. Three-fourths is a, is a tricky answer because it looks like it goes up one, two, three, and over one, two, three, four. But you got to look at the units. you got to look at the units. Next, from the complete graph of the function F is shown in the XY plane. For what value of X is F at its minimum? Minimum, lowest value right here. And it gives us this. So this is negative one, negative two, negative three. So for what value of x? It's just negative three. This is the dangerous answer because you might be like, oh, it's at negative two. They're asking for the x value, not the f of x value. Y is less than negative x plus one, blah, blah, blah. If the xy plane, in the xy plane, if zero, zero is a solution to the system of the inequalities above, which of the following relationships between a and b must be true? So they're saying zero, zero. So that means that zero is less than a. Right? If we plug, let me slow down. Let me back up. I'm going to plug in zero, zero for both of these. Zero is less than zero plus A. Zero is greater than zero plus B. Therefore, B is less than zero. And if we do this, A is greater than zero. These are the two things we must know. Therefore, if A is greater than zero and B is less than zero, A has to be greater than B. That's it. There's nothing more to be done there. So you just, this is plug and chug. It's just, it's just looks a little more complicated than it is. I think we're doing good on time here. So next, a food truck sells salads for $6.50 and drinks for $2 each, right? So $6.50 per salad and drinks for $2. The food truck's revenue from selling 209 salads times 650. 209 salads, and I think it means to say like some number of drinks. It just says drinks, but like a certain number of drinks times two, we don't need the decimals, equals 836.50. How many salads were, oh, no, 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 I'm sorry, now I see, 209 salads and drinks. So they sold 209 total. So hold on a second, we're trying to find this trying to find two over here. So they've sold 209 total. So we could say they've sold X salads and we've sold 209 minus X. Why did I do that? Because the 209 is the total. So if we've sold like 100 salads, that means we've sold 109 sodas or drinks. It's the two quantities have to add up to 209 so you can break it down like this. So let's go ahead and multiply it out. 650X plus 418 minus 2x 
equals 836.5. And we're going to solve, once we solve for x, we got our number of salads. Uh, this combines here negative 2x, so this becomes 450x, right? Combine these guys. Plus 4, 8, oops, 418 equals 836.5. Subtract 418, subtract 418. I'm going to still do this mentally. I'm going to do the last step with the calculator. 4.5x, don't need that zero. <clears throat> it is 0. 0.5, 32, 16 is 8, 1, 4. 418.5, okay? Now we do 418.5 divided by 4.5. 418.5 divided by 4.5 equals 93. There's our beautiful 93 right there, and we are done. We're a little more than halfway, and I think we're doing pretty decent on time, so I don't have to rush like the no calculator section. Alma bought a laptop computer at a store that gave 20% discount off its original price. The total amount she paid to the cashier was P dollars, so... 20%, so she paid 0.8 of this thing. And the total amount she gave to the cashier was P dollars, including an 8% sales tax on this guy. So then she got this, and then she paid this. Okay, what am I doing here? So first I'm applying the discount. So let's say that the cost was $100. The discount then would be $80. But then she's paying 8% sales tax. So we have to not just multiply by 0 0.08, but by 1.08 to get the total price. Okay, because this includes the price. So this would mean she's paying $88. So which of the following represents, and this is what she spent, okay? Which of the following represents the original price, which is X? All we gotta do, isolate X, so let's do it. 0.8X equals, I'm gonna divide both sides by 1.08. So P over 1.08, and then multiply, I'm sorry, divide by, oh, we have to divide by 0 0.08 as well. Whoops, should have done that one step. So it's kind of like 1 over 0 0.8, I'll write it like this. And then we can just multiply these guys. Uh, oh, actually, it gives it to us right here without multiplying. It's P over 1.08 times 0 0.8. Like I could, I could have just divided both of these simultaneously, but that's it. P over 1.08 times 0 0.8. That would give us our original price of X. Okay, let's clear the board. 21, group X, group Y, total. The data in dreams, this is about dreams. The data in the table above were produced by a sleep researcher studying the number of dreams people recall when asked to record their dreams for one week. Group X consisted of 100 people who observed early bedtimes. So they go to bed early. And then group Y consists of 100 people who, who observed later bedtimes. If a person has chosen at random from those who recalled at least one dream. So that's this over here. What is the probability that a person belonged to group Y? So let's see. So this is here. This is 85, right? We could just subtract 15, but so X is 85. <clears throat> y in this case is 79. Okay. And <clears throat> 79. And then the total of guys who've recalled more than one dream is 39 plus 125. is also 200 minus 36 is 164. 164. So what's the probability that it, they belong to group Y? So probability is just number of ones we're trying to select, which is 79 over the total, which is 164. So in this case, it's C. Because we can't take the entire total, just the total. It wouldn't be accurate. So the total of people who recalled at least one tree. Next question. <clears throat> which of the following best approximates the average rate of change in the annual budget for agriculture and natural resources in Kansas from 2008 to 2010. So what is it, what, average rate of change, agriculture, natural resources. So the rate of change, so we go up in those two years, it goes 488106 minus 
8708. Calculator would be great for this. Uh, let's do it here. 488106. 106 minus, yikes, this is crazy. 358708. 358708 equals, and that's over two years. So if we want for one year, we divide by two and 646, whatever. But this is in thousands. So we got to add, multiply by thousands. So it's, what is that? It's about like 65 million if we round it up per year. And that is B. Of the following, which program's ratio of its 2007 budget to its 2010 budget is closest to the human resources program ratio of its 2007 to 2010. So let's first calculate human resources 2007 to 2010. So it's about 4051050 divided by 46. Oh, shoot. I, I went the wrong one. Human resources, right? Divided by 5921379. So 0. 0.6841. Let's write that down. 0. 0.6841. Roughly like that. Which one of these is going to be close? I'm gonna do a quick, it's about two thirds, right? Four to six, oops, did I change this? No, I'm good. So let's see, this one looks a little less uh, than two thirds. This one does not look close to two thirds at all, right? 14 over say, like 1800, 1500 over 1800, uh-uh. This one, these are almost the same. This one looks good, education. So let's look at, let's look at these guys. So agricultural resources. So education is two, one, six, four. We don't even need to put in all these numbers, but I will divide it by three, zero, zero, eight, zero, three, six. That's pretty good. And then let's try agricultural natural resources, three, seven, three, nine, zero, four, divided by four, eight, eight, one, zero, six. That's not as close. And then what was the other one I said, maybe? Uh, no, none of these are as good. So um, this one's not good either. So we're going to go with, what did I say? Education. And this is an education channel. How appropriate. Let's go to the next question here. We've got uh, 32 minutes left. Well, we're doing great. We're way more than halfway and we got more than half the time left. Which of the following is an equation of a circle in the XY plane, zero, four, and a radius with endpoint blah 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 okay first of all if you want to the formula for a circle is this it's x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals radius squared now h and k is the center so we can start by doing this x minus zero squared plus y minus four squared equals radius squared we're almost there, but we don't know the radius. So, oh, by the way, and this is just x. So x squared, right? x minus zero is just x squared plus y minus four squared equals radius squared. So we can right off the bat eliminate d and b. So it's either it's one of these two. The question is, what's the radius? So the radius is going to be the distance from here to here. So we got to use a little distance formula. Okay. So we say the difference of the y's, 5 minus 4, squared, plus the difference of the x's, uh, 5 minus 4, 4 thirds minus 0, squared. So this is just 1 squared plus, I'll put another root here, 1 squared plus 4 thirds squared. And 4 thirds squared, man, not a lot of room, but this is basically 1 plus 16 over 9, okay? And then I'm going to turn 1 into 9 over 9. So we got square root of 25 over 9. <clears throat> and the square root of that is 5 over 3. But it's not C because, remember, we, that's the radius. we got to plug it in here. And then, so you have to be x squared plus, let me cordon this off, y minus 4 squared equals 5 thirds squared 
which is 25 over 9. So that's a pretty – wait. No, I almost clicked B. It's A. It's this guy because of the minus, not the plus. So it's 25 over 9. Yowzers. Don't forget, though, you got to know those circ the circle equation if you don't memorize it because they, they have it now as a whole category. The equation above expresses the approximate height in meters of a ball t seconds after it is launched vertically upward from the ground with an initial velocity of 25 meters per second. After how many seconds will this hit the ground? Hmm. After how many seconds is asking will height equal zero? Negative 4.9 t squared plus 25t. Solve for t. Let's do a little factoring. T comes on the outside, negative 4.9t plus 25. T can either equal 0 times 0 because it starts at the ground, we assume. Or we can say this, 4.9t plus 25 equals 0. Solve for T. Subtract 25, subtract 25. Negative 4.9t equals negative 25. Divide by negative 4.9. Divide by negative 4.9. And let's use a calculator to, just to be easier. I'm not. I'm going to ignore the negatives because the negatives cancel out. Five point one zero, and it says approximately, so we round down to five. Lovely. Let's move on. Katarina is a botanist studying the production of pears by two types of pear trees. She noticed that type A produced type A. Produced 20% more than type B, meaning we could represent it like this. This is 20% more B, okay? And it's basically it's B times 1.2. 1.2, it augments it by 20%. Based on Katrina's observations, if type tree type A produced 144, what did B produce? Remember, if we'd set this up right, B should be less. Isolate for B. Divide by 1.2. What's 144 divided by? It's actually, it's actually uh, 120, I think. But let's do the division anyways. 144 divided by 1.2 is 120. Cool. So that's it. Set it up. Isolate. All right, let's see here. A square field measures 10 by 10. Oop, oops. Let's draw it out. Do, 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 like this, 10 by 10. 10 students each mark off a randomly selected region of the field. Each region is a square and has lengths of one meter. So we have like little one here. Maybe a guy does like here. How many? Uh, 10 students. Okay, cool. No two regions overlap. The students count the earthworms contained in the soil. So let's actually draw them out. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is what they're doing. They're taking these little squares. And then they they dig five centimeters beneath the ground. So they then go negative five centimeters. These are in meters. The results are shown in the table below. Number of earthworms, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. Which of the following is a reasonable approximation of the number of earthworms to a depth of five centimeters be beneath the ground surface in the entire field? Oh my. That means we have to calculate the mean of all of this. Or actually, we, not, not even the mean. We just All you have to do is add up all these guys and then multiply. And, and then there are 100 square meters in this and we've just taken a sampling of 10. So when we add up the total, then we have to multiply it by 10. Because we've got 10 meters squared and we need 100 meters squared. So to get here, we just multiply by 10. So let's be precise. We may, we may not need, we may not need, uh, hold on, my live stream here ended up start again. We may not need to add them all up to be super precise, but I'm gonna do it anyways just to be safe. So we got 107 plus 147 plus 146 plus 145 plus 149 plus 
times 10 equals about 15,000. So it's pretty nice. They're spaced out. That is it. Next one. The system of inequalities, y is greater than or equal to 2x plus 1, and y is greater than or equal to 1 half x minus 1 is graphed here. Which quadrant contains no solution to this guy? All right. Let's graph these out, shall we? 2x plus 1, here's 1. We got a slope of 2 over 1, so something like this. Do, 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 do. And it's greater than, so I'll just change this to make it a little easier. You don't need this nice stuff, but shade all above here, just like so. And we need solutions to the system, to both of these guys. Now let's go back to this. And then it says y equals 1 half x minus 1. Here's negative 1. Oops, that's too thick. Negative 1 is here. Here's this guy. And it's 1 half x, so 1 over 2, right? 1 over 2, because that's 1 half. Here's this guy. Do, 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 do. And there we go. And this is greater than also. So here, let's extend this down here. Shares of volume contains no solution to, which project contains no solution to the system. I'll do this one in green just to make it a little easier. So it's above here, whoops, all this. And you see the overlap is all in this zone up in here. I'll do overlap in blue. The real, the real solution is all up in here. La da 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 da. And it looks like we have solutions in quadrant three, quadrant two, and quadrant one, but nothing in quadrant four. And that's what they're asking. Where do we not have any solutions? And that is quadrant four, right? It's all white there. That's it. Let's move on. We've got 22 minutes left. For the polynomial P of X, the value of P of three is negative two which must be true about P of X. Oh, it's a polynomial. Oh, okay, so if negative two, God, how do I explain this one? I know it's C, but usually, all right, if, oh, wait, 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 sorry, 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 sorry. I'm, I'm, I, I spoke too soon, I spoke too soon. <clears throat> okay, if we know that if we plug in three and we get negative two, that means if we plug in X of three, it's gonna come out to a y value of p of x equals negative two. So that means that in fact, uh, if we take, if we divide by this, all right, or if we do, I don't know if you're familiar with, with synthetic division, but if we put a three up in here like this, you're gonna end with a negative two as your remainder. And synthetic division is the same as dividing by this guy. This literally means that if you divide by x minus three, you're gonna have to get a remainder of this. The, you can also kind of guess that this is true because all of these guys would only be factors if P of like those values, P of five, P of two, P of negative two would give you zero. But when you have negative two like that, it's, uh, you know what I'm saying? It's It's gotta be D, there's really no question about it. Okay. Uh, I noticed somebody said I got a dessert on my wall. Yes, pie, that's right. <laughs> For YouTube audience, you can't see that, but I got pie up here on my whiteboard. All right, next, we got a function, x squared minus 2x minus 15. Which of the following is an equivalent form of the equation above from which the coordinates of vertex A can be identified as constants? Okay. So the coordinates of vertex A, we need to put this in, uh, what's it called, um, in vertex form. And the way you do that is by completing the square. So it's x squared minus 2x minus 15. How do we complete the square? We go like this, minus 2x. We take half of this and square it, which is just 1. But now we've added 1. You can't just willy-nilly add 1, so we also have to subtract 1 to make sure this whole thing is balanced out. Then we can combine this to become negative 16. And then we can make this a perfect square, because we turn this into a perfect square, and it's actually just x minus 1 squared. 
right? And if you FOIL this out, you would get this. This is vertex form. This means our, our vertex is at 1 because it's x minus k and negative 16. Well, guess what? That's where it is, 1, negative 16. I mean, they didn't draw it totally precisely, but it's right. And this is it right here, d. Nothing else even comes close. All right, next one. We've got eight questions left in 19 minutes, so we're in pretty good shape, so I don't have to go super fast. Why can husk at least 12 dozen ears of corn per hour and at most 18 dozen? Based on this information, what is a possible amount of time? Now, again, free response is going to drop down to a little easier. There's a possible amount of time in, our, uh, time in hours that it could take to husk 72 ears of corn. I'm just going to use 12. Uh, and say, if we does 12 in an hour, what's 72 divided by 12? It's just 6. Okay. If we were to divide it by 18, it's 4. Okay, so it's going to be somewhere in the zone of 4 to 6. You want to be extra safe. You can do this in 5 hours. Okay. And and that's just, you know, it's a, it's a personal preference. It's up to you, but you can, anything, anything should work. 4 should work, 5 should work, 6 should work, because it said possible amount of time. Number 32, the posted weight limit for a covered wooden bridge is 6,000 pounds. A delivery truck carrying X identical boxes weighing 14 pounds each, so weight of the boxes is this, will pass over the bridge if the combined weight of the empty delivery truck and its driver is 4,500 pounds. So this is the empty truck and this. What is the maximum possible for X that will keep the combined weight of the truck, driver, and boxes below? Below, not less than or equal to less than 6,000. So what is the maximum possible? Let's, sub let's solve. Subtract 4,500. Subtract 4,500. 14x is less than 6,000. Guess what? Calculator. Secciones. I'm not going to risk it. I'm going to plug it in. 6,000 divided by 14 equals... 428.57. Do we round up? No, because rounding up will take us over. So 428 is how many boxes we will carry. I think that sounds right. I think that sounds right. Next question here. Number of portable media players sold worldwide each year. According to the lie graph above. The number of portable media players sold in 2008 is what fraction of the number sold in 2011? So 2008 and 2011. The number, oh, sorry, I just, I just totally blanked out for a second. The number of portable media players sold in 2008 is what fraction in 2012? So 2008, we have 100. In 2011, we have 160. And that reduces to 10 over 16, which reduces to, divided both by 2, 5 over 8. And let me just make sure I read that right, because it seemed a little fast. The, gra the number of portable media players sold in 2008, fraction over 2012, 11, that's what I did, so 5 eighths. The millions doesn't matter, because all those zeros will cross out anyways. It's irrelevant, so 5 eighths is good. Five questions remaining. A local television station sells time slots for programs in 30 minute intervals. If the station operates 24 hours per day, what is the total number of 30 minute time slots they can sell for Tuesday and Wednesday? So 24 hours, right? But 30 minute intervals, that means each day they have 48, 48 slots, right? If it were hour intervals, then it would be 24, but it's half hour interval, so it's 48. But that's just for Tuesday. Wednesday, we have 48 again, 96. All right, I know these get tougher as we go on now. See, now we're in cylinders. This is no joke, but they offer you a formula for cylinders at the beginning if you need it. A dairy farm, farmer uses a storage silo that is the shape of a right circular cylinder. If the volume of the silo 
72 pi cubic yards. What is the diameter? All right, how do you do volume of this guy? Volume equals pi r squared times height. There's your formula. Well, the volume, it already tells us is 72 pi. The height is 8. And we don't know the radius, but we need to find the, we actually need to find the diameter, but we'll get there from the radius. Let's divide both sides by 8 pi. We're just isolating, right? Pi goes away, 8 goes away, pi goes away. What's 72 divided by 8? That is 9. 9 equals r squared. Take the square root of both sides. r equals 3. The radius is 3. Oh, but it's not asking for radius. It's asking for diameter. Diameter is 2 times the radius. So diameter is 6. I bet you that's the most common incorrect answer for this one is 3. Guarantee it. So read those instructions. They even underline it for you to be nice, but read them carefully. Three problems remaining. So this is nice because we have 13 minutes to do the last three, and these are going to be harder. So we got this crazy function. For what value of x is, is this function undefined? Undefined has to do with when this entire denominator with a fraction like this goes to zero. So what does that mean? It means all we care about is when this denominator plus 4x oops, minus 5 plus 4 equals 0. And we solve. That's it. So we're going to have to do some hardcore work here because we got to really we got to really distribute and do it. Wait, maybe there's an easier way. Let me think. If we factor 4, and there is. I think there is an easier way. We can factor out a 4, and then it's x minus 5 plus 1. And then I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mess with it. I'm just gonna do it the old-fashioned way. It's not the fastest, but that's okay. <clears throat> oh, I get it, I get it, I get it. We can do it. We can literally do a little substitution and say x minus 5 equals y. So then this is y squared plus 4y plus 4 equals 0. This factors into y plus 2, y plus 2. That's a perfect square. So this is y plus 2 equals 0. And then we substitute x minus 5 back in. Uh, let me make some room up here. I didn't even see that. So it becomes x minus 5 plus 2. I forgot the squared. Squared equals 0. And this is x minus 3 squared equals 0. Therefore, x equals 3, right? That's what makes this go to 0. You plug 3 in, 3 minus 3 is 0. Squared is 0. It's a bit faster than if I would have foiled everything and then tried to factor again. Two questions remaining. Jessica opened a bank account that earns 2% interest compounded annually. Her initial deposit was $100. She uses this 100x to the t to find the value of the account after t years. What is the value of x in the expression? All right, so she puts in $100. x is going to be the, oh, sorry, 2% interest. So it earns 2% interest. With these equations, x actually represents kind of how much you're multiplying it by your interest rate, but not just your interest rate. It's like one plus your interest rate. So you say I am over 100. So interest rate is two. So X would be 1.02. This is a hard question because they are they want you to know how to calculate interest rate. So it's got to be 1.02. Uh, okay, let's see here. 1.02 is what would go in for X. Now let's go to this guy here. Let's delete this. Jessica's friend Tyshawn found an account that earns 2.5 interest compounded annually. Is this compounded? Yeah. Tyshawn made an initial deposit of $100 into his account at the same time she made $100 into her account. So his is one point. His is like this to the T. Hers is like this, 100 times 1.02 to the T. 
after 10 years, right? And T is just years. How much more money will Tyshawn have than Jessica? And we got a round to the nearest cent. So we're going to do it like this. 100 times 1.02, 10. 100 times 1.025 times 10. Calculator time, calculator time. So let's go up here. 100 times 1.02 to the 10th power. Jessica has 121 and 90 cents. 121 and 90 cents. Tyshawn, who's obviously going to make more money, is 100 times 1.025 to the 10th power. He'll make $128. Whoops, 128 and 0 cents. Right? We don't round, really. So now we got 128 minus 121.9000 and do a little subtraction. Now I can do you can do this mentally. It's going to be six dollars and ten cents, but no dollar sign. So just put in six point one zero. I think you got to put one the zero, otherwise they'll take points off. So we got eight minutes left. I'm just going to go ahead and end it early. And man, that was pretty exhausting. <laughs> I was planning to do more. I was planning to go through another test, but I think I'm going to have to call it here, and we'll make another live stream for a full test at another time. And I think I'm done with this section. Let's see how we did. Let's see what we got here for the math. And let's skip the optional essay. Okay. Oh, I, I made some mistakes in math because I got a 780. So let's see which one I got wrong. So 200 gave me the, the lowest score because I skipped those. Uh, let's see which one I got. So let's see if I can review this. How do I review? I got everything right there. What did I make a mistake in here? Let's go back. Review math calculus. So I got, oh my God, I got two incorrect. So let's take a look and see what I got wrong. What did I do incorrectly? Whoops. All these were right. Whoops. Keep going, keep going. Correct, correct, correct. Is this one right? This one. So I did 428. So what did I answer? What was this question? What is the maximum possible value for X? Let's do this one again. So it was 107, and I calculated how many? Oh, shoot. I know what I did. I know what I did. I know what I did. OK. No, actually, wait. I, I got four, 428 totally is wrong. How did I even get 428? So it's 14x plus 4,500 is less than 6,000, right? So we subtract 4,500, subtract 4,500, and we get 14x, oops, is less than 1,500. And then we divide by 14. I, I do not know what I did. I think I must have divided 4,500 by 14 or something. I don't know. Because this should give us the right answer. 1500, oops. 1500 divided by 14 is 107. I don't know why I entered 428. I'm, I'm going to have to go back and watch again. So if you guys caught that while I was doing it, that's awesome. Uh, bro, I, I'm kind of blanking on what I did when I set it, because I thought I set it up correctly. I must have made a quick little mental glitch. All right, so there's one I got wrong. And let's see, second one. I got this one wrong. 611. It's the same thing. No, did I? So 611 over 100 is 6.11. 6.11 and I got 6.10. Did I? What did I do for here? For, let me look at back at my answers here. So we did one. So I, I was off by a cent. So let's see why. Because I did 100 times 1.02 to the 10th power equals 12, 121.90. Is that what I did? Maybe they didn't round. So they did, OK. So let's just keep this number here. So 1.21, 1.21, 1.21. 
we'll say minus, we'll say minus 10, 100 times 1.025 to the 10th power equals, and it's the positive version of this. Oh, see, you know what? You know what? What I did wrong here is I rounded too soon. So I rounded the two answers and then I did the subtraction. And that actually got me one cent off. I was thinking about that too uh, when I was actually did it. I was wondering, but I, I just assumed that would be negligible. In this case, that's not true. So then you see now we'd have gotten negative 6.109 and we'd have to round up and it would be 6.11, not 6.10. So you see that? I mean, they just put it in fraction form, but I was off by one cent. So those are the two questions that I got wrong. And I think I'm going to, I'm literally spent. That was exhausting. So I'm going to go back to the screen share here. Okay. So there we go, guys. Uh, that was one full practice test. And maybe if I have time, I think today is going to be tough because of my schedule today. But maybe next weekend I'll jump on. I'll do another full length practice test for you guys from A to Z. Uh, if you didn't get to watch the live stream and you're jumping on now, go ahead and watch the live stream. Watch me solve all these SAT Khan Academy problems. And hopefully that will give you some good insight as far as how to go through, how to prepare, how to what strategies to apply when solving these problems. And you can kind of see how I do it. And I, I really hope that's helpful. So thank you guys so much. This was super fun. I'm glad I, I was able to do it. Hopefully next weekend when I get to do it, you'll get to see me too simultaneously while I'm solving the problems. Should be a bit more fun. And that's it for today. So have a great Sunday. Take it easy.